Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Dozo Zabe. I am playing Kerbal Space Program. Our KSP. 0.22 update. What this, which is a big update because it allows us to take a look at the first stages of the career mode. That a lot of people have been waiting to see. And... I personally have already wanted to. Anyways. Now. It's a work in progress. So there might not be much to see eventually when I get to that point. But I have not gotten to that point so far. Now let's take at this new look at this new building. Called Research and Development. Okay. Here we are at the research and development tree. Uh, what this uh, entails is what we need in order to build our spacecraft. We uh, get science points, science, when we uh, do experiments in space. Uh, like for example, it says start here, and this is what we get at the start, and when we eventually uh, get enough re science points we end up uh, getting to spend them on these new branches of this tree like for example how far I've gotten into this and still need to do it now these numbers do not represent the uh, actual price of it if I had 122 and can only spend six on this and I could spend six on this I'd be on fucking easy street but I'm not because, see, I'll explain to you how it w how this went when I did this. This was five research points. This was 20. I think this was 19. And then this was 18. But then it started having a consistent number. Where are you going? Uh, for example, these four right here all cost 45. And as we go to this, this bunch we get 90 and then after that yep that was the 91 after that we get 160 and then to 300 <laughs> a whole lot of science needs to be done <laughs> Do I think that's a good the price is a good idea? No, I do not. <laughs> it's actually quite horrible. Anyway. What this essentially do does is unlock new parts for you, if I haven't said that before. Uh interestingly 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 enough, I ended up uh doing two videos of this. One I the first one I did not think was worthy of my channel because it was 40 minutes long. The second, to my amazement, was also 40 minutes long. The reason why the first one was 40 minutes long is because I got so into actually doing this that I forgot I was recording. And it took it literally took me 40 minutes to fucking figure that out. That I was recording still. And the second time, which was also 40 minutes long to my amazement, uh, was actually the better video, except for the fact that you could not hear me when I was trying to explain shit to pe people over the sound of the thrusters. And it was awesome, too, because I actually ended up landing on the moon on that one. But I was unhappy with my work. Alright, let's get down to business. Let me show you how to actually do some of this stuff. Alright, I have a spacecraft loaded for this. Spike lander. Let me show you all the uh, sciencey parts. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. That oddly took a while. All right. Normally, this is not a spacecraft you would want <laughs> to launch into space with this game. One, because it is very—it would be very unstable. Luckily, I took the time to apply all these friggin' support struts, which you did not have at the start. You actually had to work for those, so you couldn't believe. You couldn't believe what I needed to do to take this. To do this. Okay. Uh, I actually want to explain the sub-assemblies. Some some there was a problem with the first versions of this game where you could not end up, uh, let's say you built the, like a base of the rocket, which like this is, that worked really well. And when you were trying to build the new one, you could, you had to do a new thing and all your progress with that rocket is rust and build it from the ground up again. Which was irritating because some people forgot what they did on their original rocket. Okay. <clears throat> so. They put this in so you can take apart your previous rocket. Save it to this so it's just those parts that you want to save. And then apply them to another rocket. This is good up until the point when you can figure out how to do this. I figured that out before they did put the symbol assemblies things in there. It's it's quite comical how when you figure out how to do that instead of just taking apart the whole rocket and everything like that that I could have just done that. Even though I removed one part, it's kind of silly, but it's still useful for the people who have not figured that out, which is good. All right. Let me explain to you what the sciency parts are. This is your science thing, or what I have unlocked so far. Okay. So, what I just removed was a second laboratory. Or, yeah, it is a uh, laboratory. And the thing with that is that you don't need two of everything. You actually only need one. Because just because they're getting the same enough amount of science points does not mean that, oh, I can get double the science points if I use two of them. Which you can't. You can't. I, I figured that out. Uh, okay. What else was I going to say? What else was I going to say? Alright. Yeah, I've built... <clears throat> in order to just keep getting more science, I decided to build the drone of this. Which I have. However... This is going to be a lander. This is going to show you how I land on the moon. Alright. Let's launch this baby. The reason why I had those two containers on the uh, top of the uh, rocket was just for looks. It actually looks pretty cool. Now, like I said with the uh, lander, I mean the probe, I ended up... Uh, doing fuck I forget my thoughts again damn it what the problem with the probe was that I didn't have enough uh, solar panels or in fact good ones so I had to unlock those so this rocket <laughs> even though it really doesn't need this many is loaded with uh solar panels and if you and the thing is if you lose uh, if you lose energy you can't control your spacecraft if you lose the carbon you cannot pilot your spacecraft 
Alright. Hopefully I turned down the uh, spacecraft sounds quite enough for you guys to hear me. Okay. Now let me uh, explain this part to you guys. Alright. Observe materials bay. Now when you do right click that and, uh, and hit the observe button, you'll get something like this. Now this is a material study while flying at Kerbin. This will tell you what point in time you are actually flying and whatnot. Uh, let's do this real quick so if the video goes much faster. Alright. And it will give you a description of what exactly happened, the data size in order for you to transmit, and the scientific value. The scientific value basically tells you how much uh, science points you're going to get for the game. For the experiment. Now as you can see, the scientific value is at 0.1. The reason for that is because I have already did this. I already did a material study while flying at Kerbin. Now that's kind of a big problem according to the prices because that those points will not regenerate themselves. Which makes it a little bit more tougher than it already is to get the science points, but it's acceptable. Once you actually figure out how where and when you can get the science points, the game it starts getting a little bit easier. Okay. All right. Now hopefully I can do this better. What the hell was that? Oh yeah, it's the weird clouds. <laughs> the indication that you're breaking the sound barrier. Okay. So yeah, those points won't regenerate and uh they will uh, basically it basically tells you stop doing this at this point. You know what I'm saying? And it turns out the farther you get away from Kerbin, I believe that's what the planet Earth in this game is called, uh ends up getting a lot more you get a lot more points the farther farther away you go okay hopefully this video will not take 40 freaking minutes <laughs> it probably will because I'm basically doing everything that I said in the freaking second video that I screwed up just without all the freaking background noise That was odd. I did not lose that much. Okay. Let's speed this up a little bit. Get to a certain point and there we go now we gotta actually get into an orbit it might say orbit right here but that does not mean we're in an orbit that just means we're in out of space currently technically an orbit means that you are actually going around the planet as you can see my uh, this point here and this point here are increasing and I need to keep increasing that until it actually gets around the planet if that does not happen all I'm gonna do is go across this line from this point here all the way into the planet so effectively killing Bill Kerman <laughs> which is not what you want to do even though it's 
kind of funny that you do. <laughs> in the second video, I thought I fucked this up, but I didn't and eventually got into an orbit, which was good. As you can see what this flag is on the moon, you can see two of my ships right there. You got this guy, which is the Spike 1, which is a probe, and then there's another Spike lander here, which it landed. <laughs> Uh, kind of in a fucked up way. If I can actually somehow manage to land in the same freaking spot, you guys will laugh your asses off in what I freaking did. Either that or the landing will result in the same exact way. Which you will still laugh your asses off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Crap. I may have screwed this up, guys. Let's just wait and see. Hopefully it does not screw up. Hopefully... I screwed it up. <laughs> what I tell you, this shit can happen. Alright. Stop recording here and then just... Correct this problem. Okay, guys, uh, I tried to re-correct correct the problem. That is what I'm currently doing now by starting a new flight. And, uh, I actually almost corrected the problem, uh, with the, uh, whole thing. I almost got it to, a, to where I wanted to. I almost actually created an orbit. However, the PE or the lowest point of orbit, was still too fucking low. Even though I can actually see the PE on the screen, I was about at, like, I think, 20,000, uh, no, 18,000 meters, uh, feet in the sky. I was only 18,000, uh, feet, in, f at 18,000 feet. As you can see now, I think I need to, uh, increase my, uh, AP, my highest point of orbit, <coughs> to 100,000 meters or miles See if this works again. I had to keep my eye on the nav ball.
I may have fucked it up again, but hopefully I didn't because thing looks wider now. Yep, it seems to be working this time around. Working properly. There's the PE. 30,000, 40, 50, 60, 70. Okay, that should be good enough. I need to conserve as much fuel as I can, guys. It's a long trip. And. What happened in the previous video is that it actually took like a hundred times for this, for me to be, uh, get caught by the moon's gravity pull. Okay, let's see. Let me show you how the solar panels work. I tell you, because I put so many solar panels on this thing, it's going to look ridiculous. Now for the upper ones. <laughs> <laughs> See, what did he tell you? <laughs> Alright, let's turn it towards the sun so it's just... That's the cool thing about the solar panel panels in this game. Is that they will always face towards the sun. As you can see... Turn it completely around, and the solar panels move. Oh. 
let's raise our uh oh no that's not what we want to do right now let's raise our pe a little bit more before we start raising our ap oh, oh what are you doing Okay, that's good. As long as we can do something like this. Increase the time lapse. Okay, now let's raise the AP. So that it intersects with the moon's gravitational line. Apparently... Oh, that was an ambulance. And then a school bus. Okay. Apparently my light lighter refuses to work right now. Now let us speed up time. Oh, shit. Stop, 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 stop. All right. <laughs> okay, almost screwed up there. this all right how's my feel okay This is a very complicated process. Needs to be handled with the utmost care. <laughs> Let's extend the rest of our solar panels so we look a thousand times more ridiculous. Now that the boosters are out of the way. Ah, beautiful. Did I extend all, extend all the power? Yeah, I did. All right, let's get back to PE.
think this is good. We need to lower this to the point where it looks like it's a straight line almost. Now the reason why you want to keep it in these like little circles is because it does it faster. The one with the X reduces that is doing this right now. Okay. Now let's change the direction so that we're right here. Here, almost right at the top. Let's deploy our landing gear. You want to keep the uh, speed that you're going at. Like you can see, I'm going at 64 meters per second, under 100. Increase that for a little bit. Just uh, get my point. All right. Speed up time a little bit. You don't want to speed it up too much, or you're gonna slam straight into the moon, and you will not be able to stop yourself. It's absolutely critical that you have enough boost to keep yourself under a hundred meters per second. Okay, at this point, all we need to do is this. All right, let's see. And do it in intervals. Don't blow out your entire thing all at once. Okay, okay, looks good so far. Final burn.
as you can see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Ah! Shit. Okay. Alrighty then. Alright. Stop. Stop. Okay. Let's... Ro nope. Roll it over like that. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have landed on the moon. Now let's... go on an EVA. As you can see, the bits and pieces of the solar panels are still there. Alright, let's plant a flag. Site name. Uh, upside. No, upside. Slide down. Numero uno. No, dos. Here. Another Kermel. decided nope decided grammar Nazi uh, to flip to land his craft on its side <laughs> Read plaque. The plaque on upside down two reads. Here another girl decided to land on his on its side. I screwed that up. Alright. Now let's take a surface sample. The darker midland surface appears to be made up of bali basil ballistic. Basaltic. Basaltic? Yeah, that's that says basaltic. Okay. Scientific value is 120, which is really good. Keep data. EVA report. You look up and search the sky for carbon. Suddenly you feel very small. Scientific value, 32. All right, keep data. Now let's try to get back into our upside down ship. Uh, need to get a little bit closer. Ah. Take one step. But what? Why are you turning? Ugh. Ah, there we go. Crawl up. Board. Now, our antenna is right there. The previous upside down site lander landed, somehow successfully landed on its, on where the thing was 
facing downward. So you can imagine how bouncy it was. Okay. Transmit data. Fifteen data received. So I got a seventy six uh, scientific value from that. The reason why I didn't just do the whole thing is because, well, if I was to, let's say, do this with the observed materials bay on the moon and go do something else for a while. <laughs> And see, there's this 20% uh, meaning that it's only going to uh, transmit in one setting 20% of this. So let's see that. Data 20 science added. All right, so we successfully landed on the moon again, and slightly screwed it. Did not screw it up more. I think actually, out of the solar panels on the last one, only like two of these survived. Technically, you are not supposed to be landing something this big. But I have successfully managed to done it without killing Bill Kerman. Or destroying my entire ship. Which is good. Alright everybody, uh, this is it for this video. Let us look at the sun. And wonder what could have been. This is Dozo Zabi. See you next time. Please like and subscribe.